our scripture lesson, my foundational scripture rather, has already been read in your hearing the gospel according to St. John chapter 20 verses 1 through 18. I'm not going to reread that. We read that already. So I'm going to give you my subject. My subject today is the power of resurrection. The power of resurrection. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. The lesson text here, and I'm going to try to be expeditious, as much expeditious as I can, because we got to get ready for this youth retreat. But yeah, yeah, so I'm trying to be as expeditious as I can here. But the, the lesson text has already been read, and it lets us know that they went looking for Jesus. Mary Magdalene went looking for Jesus. When you read other Gospels, you will hear the discussion of her and the other Mary trying to figure out who's going to roll away the stone because they were going to anoint the body of Jesus. They could not anoint it when he died. They could not anoint it the next day because that was a special uh, Sabbath day because of Passover. So they couldn't anoint his body. They had to wait until that third day to go and anoint his body. And so they're going to anoint his body and they're thinking who's going to roll away the stone. And when they get to the tomb, the stone is already rolled away. Instead of thinking back on what Jesus had already told him, he told him when he was at the temple that I'll tear this temple down in three days it arise again. They were not thinking about that. They were just concerned about where is my Savior's body. And then she went and told two of the disciples, Peter and John, the Bible says the one who Jesus loved, John. They went running to the tomb because they wanted to find out, too, what is happening. They looked in, and, and they saw the thing that had wrapped him up in, and it was still there. And they saw the napkin that was placed on his face, and that was folded up real neat and placed on the side. And they're trying to figure out where Jesus is. They saw him die. They saw him come down from the cross. They saw him be buried in a borrowed tomb. They saw the Roman soldiers be placed in front of the tomb because the Pharisees and Sadducees had already heard that he said he would rise again. It's kind of strange that the Pharisees believed more than the disciples did. Oh, Jesus. They believed more, and so they had more faith. So they said, let's put a rock in front of it and put gods up. The disciples are hiding. They don't believe that Jesus is going to come again. But the Pharisees said, we're going to make sure he ain't coming out. Yes. But how many know you can't stop the power of resurrection? So, so I need to go to two other passages of Scripture, hit my four points and be out. Is that all right? I want to go to the Gospel according to St. John chapter 10, verse 17 and 18. I want to give you what Jesus said before he died because I want to relate the power of the resurrection to your life. Is that all right? May I really be honest with you? Can I really be honest with you? The devil has, for some of you, rolled the stone in front of you, put a guard up, and said, you ain't coming out. Somebody ought to say amen. He, he said you ain't coming out, and, and then your friends don't believe you are coming out, and they didn't abandon you, and then everybody didn't left you. But there is a power of resurrection that won't let the stone stay still. There is a power of resurrection that will scare away the guards. Because when you read the story, when the stone was rolled away and they actually saw Jesus, they were so frightened, they froze for one second. And then they exit stays right. Oh, 
God. They, they, they got out of there. It's strange that won't nobody, won't no God there, won't nobody there when Mary got there because when the power of resurrection come, it'll run all your enemies. The book of Psalms said they'll come against you one way, but they'll flee against you seven ways, and the enemy came and left seven different ways. I'm here to tell you, let me slow down a little bit. I'm just getting a little bit happy by myself. Because I know, oh, I'm trying to get to my stuff here, but I know that there was a stone put before me. And I know the gods was on the outside. And, then, and I could think, well, if I get the stone out of my way, how am I going to get past the gods? How am I going to get past the gods? If I get enough credit to get the house, where am I going to get the down payment at? Oh, can somebody feel me today? <laughs> if, if I pay all my bills up, I won't have nothing left to go get a down payment on a car. Anybody feel me today? I can get past the stone, but can I get past the God? I can go get my degree, but will I get the promotion on the job? Can I just make it plain? Can I make it plain? You got the stone in front of you, and you might get past the stone, but then how you going to get past the gods? But with the power of resurrection, I don't have to move the stone. God will move the stone for me. And this is the thing I like. Before I walk out of my grave-like situation, all of the gods that were there will be gone. Yes. Have you ever heard the, the saying, this battle is not yours, it's the Lord's? So I don't even have to walk out. I'm preparing to fight the God, but when I get out there, I don't see no. I, I know I had a whole lot against me. I, I know I shouldn't be where I'm at today, but when I get out there, ain't no gods I'm getting to have there all by myself. Ain't no gods out there. Ain't nobody out there. The power of resurrection has moved the stone and moved the gods out the way. So I go to sign and they tell me I've got to put no down payment on my house. I ain't had the money anyway. <laughs> I go and say, well, let me get that car. Well, they say, well, you know, I can get you in that car with lower payments, and that's a better car than that car. The stone has been rolled away. The cars, are, somebody out there help me say amen in here. Oh, it hasn't happened to you yet? Just keep on living for God. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, can I just give you a story? The testimony moved the stone and the gods. They stole my car. Yes. Yeah, they stole my car. Stole my Lincoln Zephyr, my nice car. Now, if the stone is rolled away, I get the car back. It's going to be all messed up because the guards are out there. If the stone is rolled away, I may get it back in a week, two weeks. But when the power of resurrection comes, you get it back the same day. Yeah. And it's still drivable. Yeah. Ain't nothing wrong with it. Yeah. The insurance company is trying to figure out uh, what you want us to do. I mean, is there anything wrong? Can, what you need us to fix? Uh, is, did you pay for this? No, I didn't have to pay for that. Well, did you have to, no, I didn't have to pay for this. Uh, well, uh, Mr. E, just call us if you need something. If you need something, just call us because you, you got your car back and ain't nothing wrong with it. And you ain't had to pay for the impound. You ain't had to just, that's because the, the stone is rolled away. The gods are gone because it's the power of resurrection. Mm. Jesus. So when the power of resurrection come, I, I don't have to worry about it. John 10 and 17, did you get there? I gave you enough time. Did you get there? John 10 and 17, look what Jesus is saying. Therefore, do if my father love me. Because I laid down my life that I may take it again. No man take it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have the power to lay it down. Now, right there, I may not have no hope. Because if he got, he got the power to lay it down, no man's going to take his life. But there's an and there. They taught me in school, and is a conjunction. Conjunction, junction, what's your function? Hooking up verbs. Them, I ain't going there. Um, yeah, there's an ad there. There's an there's a ad there. Saturday, 
schoolhouse rock. Yeah. There's an and there. It's connecting something else. And he said, and I don't have just the power to lay it down. He said, and I have the power to take it up again. This commandment, this commandment, this commandment have I received of my father. This thing ain't optional. I got the power to lay it down, and I got the power to pick it back up. And that means if I can do it for me, I can do it for you. Oh, God. You know you don't want to deal with nobody who say they got some good stuff they use it, but they ain't no better than they are before. You don't want to use their stuff. But Jesus said, I'm going to show you that the stuff I'm using is good. I'm going to lay it down, and then I'm going to pick it back up. I'm doing it so I can show you that no matter what you get down in, I can come and pick you up out of it. I, I want to show you by example because you ain't going to take my word for it. Oh, God, y'all. <laughs> you ain't going to take my word for it. You got to see this thing. So I'm going to purposely lay it down, and then I'm going to purposely get back up so I can show you there's power in the resurrection. Go over to the next chapter, John, John 11 and 25. I'm going to read it from the Amplified Bible. You may have the King James, so it may sound a little different, but I'm going to read it from the Amplified. I'm almost finished here. I just got four points, and I'm going to be out. John 11 and 25. The Amplified Bible says that he's talking to Martha, I believe. Um, he's talking to Mary. Jesus said to her, I am myself the resurrection and the life. Whosoever believe in and heard to, trust in, rely on me, although he may die, yet shall he live. May I define what resurrection power is? It is the ability to bring back to life what has been killed intentionally or even accidentally. It is the ability to bring back to life what has been killed intentionally or even accidentally. May I propose to you this morning that Jesus' death was intentional, was intentional on both sides. On the devil's side and on God's side. It was intentional on both sides. But his resurrection was intentional just on one side. And that was God. So what I've learned here, what God did, God allowed Jesus to die. To accomplish a purpose. Can I hit my first point here? Some things in our lives have to die uh -huh. to accomplish a purpose. Yeah. Just to be resurrected later on. Yeah. Oh, God. Some things have to die yeah. just to be resurrected later on. Yeah. It was the devil's plan, but it was God's plan too. Yeah. I know, that's why he got quiet. That's a hard one to swallow right there. Got to get some water, take one of my horse pills, and <clears throat> that went down. Because we always want to blame the devil for everything that go bad in our lives. Every time you don't get the promotion, the devil took my promotion. You don't get the raise, the devil took my raise. You don't get this, you don't get that. The car I was praying for, I went on the car lot and laid hands on. Somebody else got it. Somebody else got it. And we always want to bring God for it. And if you look at the text about Jesus, if anybody didn't know the story, they would blame the devil on the death of Jesus. Yes, it was the devil's plan, but it was God's plan also. It was intentional. Some things have died in your life. God intended it to die for just a season. Just a season. Because you couldn't handle it the way it was. It was too much the way it was. You couldn't deal with it the way it was. So he had to let it die. But see, God said, anything that die, I can raise up again. So it really don't matter if it die or not. I can raise it back up. So ain't no problem letting it die for just a season. And some things, some relationships. I must be hitting somebody. They said, oh, oh. Oh, 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 me, oh, in trouble. That's me, yeah. Right. Some relationships, some jobs, 
good paying jobs, but you were smoking it all up. Oh, Jesus. You were spending it all up in the club. You were doing everything about it, so that had to die. You won't give it God no glory. And you ain't have it anyway. Oh, God. Somebody, y'all looking at me kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, some things had to die. It won't permanent. It was just temporary. The only reason you won't in the club because you didn't have the money, and you ain't had the money because you ain't had no job. Oh, God. Only reason you got sober because you ain't had no money. Can't, can't get no help in this house in here. <laughs> You ain't have, so the job that was the best job you ever had had to die because you weren't doing the right thing. Some of y'all only came, some of y'all only got in church because you ain't had no money. Oh, Jesus, I'm glad I'm going to youth retreat. I'm about to get out of here. You, God had to let something die in order for you to walk back in his house and you didn't even know that he was going to resurrect it later. You were just coming to the funeral. Because the death was the only thing that got you in church. Your weed died. Your filth died. Your dancing shoes died. The girl and the guy you were dating, they gone. And your little black book don't work no more. Oh, God. Uh, somebody help me preach this thing in here. It died. Friendship you had. You were hanging with everybody. Ain't nobody hanging with you no more. It died. And the only thing you had left was church. And God brought you to church to bring you better. And you didn't know he had resurrection in mind. You didn't know once he got you straight, he was going to give you a better job than you had before. You didn't know he was going to put you in a better place than you were before. You lost everything. But God said, that ain't no problem. Don't you know I know how to bring things back to you? I'll bring you new furniture. I'll get you a new house. Matter of fact, if you can help me, if you really stay with me, I'll get you a new boyfriend and a girlfriend too. Oh, Jesus. Yes, Lord. It had to die to be resurrected again. And you blaming God for the death. And guess what? God said, yeah, I did it. I did it. It was the only thing that delivered you. Because God would rather something else die than you die. Oh, I, oh that's a point right there. <laughs> Because if he had let you stay where you were. See, some of us can I deal with, I dealt with some of y'all that was in the world. But some of you weren't in the world. You were just about to die mentally. You were just about to have a breakdown. You weren't out there in the club, but your mind was all messed up. You weren't out there smoking nothing, but your mind was still messed up. And if God hadn't allowed some of that stuff to die, you would be messed up right now. And God would rather the thing die than you die. So you let some things go. You thought it was a good thing. God said it is a good thing, but it's not good right now. So some things had to die. Just so he could resurrect it again. Can I hit point number two? For the children of God, death is not the end. Death is not a period. It's just a comma. Can I take you back to English? Period means it's the end. The sentence is over. But when you see a comma, that means something else is coming behind it. Even when saints die physically, it is not a period. It is just a comma. We're going to a transition. And you're going to see your loved ones again if you live holy. So death for us ain't a big deal. Things can die in our lives. But it's only a comma. God got something else coming our way. That's why we don't trip. That's why we don't trip. Because it's only a comma. Something else is coming. I may not know what it is. But one thing I do know, if it's coming from God, it's a good thing. It may not feel good. 
God let some things die in your life. It may not feel good at the time. Ain't nothing wrong with crying. Had to shed some tears myself. Deacon Dub passed. I was up here crying. When my grandmother passed. I kept it cool up here. But I had to shed some tears. Ain't nothing wrong with shedding the tears. Tears just recognize I cared about what has gone on. And I'm going to miss it. But there's a karma behind that. But something else is going to come that's going to change some things. You know what I realized in my own family? My grandmother was, the, was a patriarch. She was 93, 94 years old when she passed. But I realized after she passed, God was trying to change the patriarch. Oh, God. And when your job is finished... He don't keep you down here to work overtime for nothing. But when the job is finished, he calls you home to get your reward. And how many, all of us like getting off work early. All of us like getting off work early. It's going to be a half a day today. I can't wait. God calls us home and says, hey, you done worked the labor. You done done what you're supposed to do. I'm going to let you get a reward. I ain't going to let you keep working down there for nothing. It's time to get your reward. I already got your replacement lined up. Death for the children of God is not a period. It is a comma. Can I hit point number three? I'm halfway through. We need to cherish, appreciate, and take care of the life God has given us. Can I give you a perfect example? As partners of LLWC, you are the life God has given me. If I don't cherish you, appreciate you, and take care of you, you would die and go somewhere else. And it would be my fault because I didn't cherish, appreciate, and take care of. Can I be honest with you this morning? You don't got to wink at me. You don't got to say amen. Some stuff you done jacked up because you didn't cherish it, you didn't appreciate it, and you didn't take care of it. It's a shame when we treat our children bad. We, we discipline them because they don't take care of something. They don't cherish something. They don't appreciate something. And then God gives us something, and we act the same way. And we're trying to figure out where they got it from. Oh, Jesus. I don't know why you can't appreciate. You ain't getting nothing else. I'm glad God don't treat us that way. Some of us wouldn't have another car. Some of us will have another house. Some of us will never get another job if God treat us that way. Because we don't cherish, appreciate, and take care of the life God gave us. And some stuff the devil didn't take. You just didn't treat it right. If I let the lamb and lion worship center die, I can't blame the devil. I may try, but I can't blame him. If I don't cherish, take care of, and appreciate the partners, I can't blame the devil if they go somewhere else where they're going to be treated right. I killed that. Some of y'all are guilty of homicide. First degree murder. You done killed some things in your life. Because you didn't appreciate it, you didn't cherish it, and you didn't take care of it. But the only thing I love today is God can resurrect anything that has a homicide that happened to it. So I'm trying to show you there's some things God has put in your life that he wants you to cherish, appreciate, and take care of. If your spouse leave you because you didn't take care of them, you didn't cherish them, and you didn't appreciate them, don't come see me. Oh, God. Oh, God. 
Because the Bible declares a wife is a good thing. I thought you were supposed to take care of a good thing. Brothers, y'all need to say amen. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. The women need to say amen. Oh, Jesus. Okay, good God Almighty. You, you got to preach it. There's some things God has dropped in your life. You know you killed it. He gave you a gift. You didn't take care of it. You didn't cherish it. You didn't appreciate it. It died on you. He gave you a ministry. It died on you. He gave you work to do. It died on you. And the devil ain't had nothing to do with it. He sat back and said, you, you doing my work for me today. I'm getting paid and not working. Because God gave it to you for you to cherish it, appreciate it, and take care of it. How many of us ever bought a plant from the store? And you warded it the first day. Some of y'all better. You warded it the whole week. But then you forgot about it. And the next thing you see, it's dead. And you trying to figure out how it died. I took care of it. No, you didn't. Got a fish. Oh, God. And the last two weeks, it lets it floating on top of the water. I fed it. I took care of it. No, you didn't. You can't take care of a plant and you can't take care of a fish and God trying to give you a ministry. I'm trying to help somebody here. You know what it is? You know what it is? We too busy want the big thing and can't cherish the little thing. But what I learned from God is, if he can't trust me with the little thing, he'll never trust me with the big thing. If I can't cherish the little thing like it's the most important thing in my life, I won't cherish the big thing. If I can't, if I can't take care of five members, I'll never take care of a hundred. If I can't appreciate a hundred, I'll never get a thousand. Oh, just wait till we get big. No, you got to act like you big now. You got to take care of that Humpty like it's a Mercedes Benz. If God can't trust you with the Humpty, how are you going to trust you with Mercedes? You don't change the oil in that car. At least the Humpty can make it without oil. The Mercedes Benz won't. He's trying to get you to take care of what you got. Can he trust you with what you got? Stop blaming the devil for killing something that you killed. But the only good thing I love about God is when I mess up like that, he's able to resurrect. The power of resurrection. Can I go to point number four and I can get out of here? The Bible declares in the book of Proverbs that the power of life and death is in the tongue. Would you stop killing your stuff with your words? Would you stop killing your health with your words? Would you stop killing your raise and your job with your words? Would you stop killing your car with your words? This piece of junk is a piece of junk now. It won't start. It won't start now. I'm sick of this job. You won't have it long. You're killing it with your words. It may not be what you want, but love it and you get what you need. Oh, God. You got to stop killing it with your words. Then this is the other thing we do. We got to stop letting other people kill our stuff with their words. You can call me cocky. You can call me anything you want. But when you say certain things about me or my kids and not the word, I'm going to say something to you. I don't care if you think I got an attitude or whatever, but you're not speaking that over my kids. Matter of fact, you're not even speaking that over any young person in LLWC because I take it personally. 
I'm not, thank you, LJ, got an amen right there. I'm not going to let you, let somebody else kill what's in my life and their stuff growing. You got to stop letting other people kill stuff in your life. Talking about your relationship. Talking about your job. And the thing is, you ain't saying nothing back. You agreeing to it. But even bigger than that, your silence is saying you right. Pastor, I don't want to get in no argument. We're just going to fight today. We're just going to fight today. Because I ain't going to let you speak that nonsense in my life. This is my life. I be like Jesus. Jesus told Peter, Satan, get thee behind me. So if I tell you the devil is a lie, don't take it personally. I can't afford, and you can't afford, to let people kill stuff in your life with their words. Don't you know it's hard enough sometimes to build my faith up to say positive things about what I'm going through? And then I'm going to let you counteract what took me all week to build up and not say something about it? Not so. Not so. I can't let my words. I can't say something. Olivia Trinity say something. So that ain't, you don't say that again. Because that don't happen in this house. That's not how this is. Correct your conversation. Correct your conversation. I say something out of my mouth. Oh, Lord, forgive me. I didn't mean that. I'm correcting my conversation. Because I'm not trying to kill anything. That's in my life. And I got the power to create it or kill it. That's why Jesus told Pilate, you don't take my life. Jesus told Pilate, you ain't taking my life. Pilate said, I got the power to let you go. Jesus had to correct him. He about to die, but Jesus corrected him, Pilate, the man who could let him go. That's how bold you got to be. He got his future. He had to let Pilate know, you couldn't even hold me if I ain't want you to. I know you think you're about to put me to death. I know you think you have the power to let me go. But if I really wanted to, I'd just call a legion of angels and I'll be out. You got to let some people know this ain't happening. You're not speaking this in my life. God got too much that he wants me to do to let you kill it. Can we be honest as I'm closing? How many, of our, how many of us let some friends kill some things in our lives? Had a good thing going, but you let them speak the wrong thing in your life. And about ready to kick yourself because you say, I should have never listened to them in the first place. Should have went ahead and took that job. Should have went ahead and did that. Should have went ahead and did whatever. But no, I let them talk me out of it. They killed what was destined for me. From God. I'm just determined tonight that nobody else kill nothing else. I'm just determined not to let you speak the wrong thing. I'm gonna teach my children how to be that. You may think the guy too and all that you just ain't no. We don't do that. That's not how that rolls around here. Because God got too much that He can want me and you to do. And this is what you got to know. This is what you got to know. Some people are on assignment to see if you're bold enough not to let them kill you. This morning as I was getting ready for morning prayer, my Bible was opened up. And I told this story last Sunday at Victory Life. But my Bible was opened up and it was talking about the prophet who prophesied. And the older prophet heard about the younger prophet prophesying. 
and told his sons, saddle up my donkey. I'm going to see this man. And told him, come eat with me. And the prophet said, no, I can't eat with you. I can't stay here. I can't go back. I'm under assignment to do what God told me to do. And the older prophet lied. And said, the angel told me to tell you, come eat with me. And he went and ate with him. And after he ate the dessert, and he was feeling mighty fine, the anointing fell on the older prophet and prophesied his death. And before he got halfway down his journey, the lion ate him up. And the Bible said the lion and the donkey that he was riding on stood by his carcass as people walked by. A lion don't stay there after he kills. He goes, but he stood there to show these people what happens when you let other people speak the wrong thing in your life. To put insult on top of it, the older prophet, when he heard that was he, when he heard about the death, he said, that's the, that's the man of God. Went and picked up his remains, buried it in his tomb, and told his sons, when I die, bury me in the same tomb. Because everything this man says is going to come to pass. But that prophet spoke death. Some people are on assignment to speak the wrong thing to you. Because God want to know, can he trust you to obey him? The angel would have to speak to me, and I told the angel, God spoke to me. I don't know about you. If God want me to do something different, since he's the one that told me to do this, he's the one that's going to have to tell me not to do it. You know how our kids that sometimes you go tell one child to tell another child to do something, and they don't do it? then you got to go tell them because they ain't following nobody else's instructions but yours. Some people are on assignment. Some are on assignment from God, but some are on assignment from the devil to kill what God wants to birth out of you. And some of us have aborted what God was supposed to birth out of us because we let other people talk to us. And we spoke the wrong things ourselves. Guess what? I'm glad that you got over on me then. But never again. Right. Fool me once. Shame on you. Fool me twice. Shame on me. I had enough shame on me. What about you? Yes. It's time to resurrect everything that the devil killed. It's time to resurrect everything God allowed to die until the timing was right. To bring it back to the place I need it to be. Don't beat yourself up because it died. Some stuff had to. Don't beat yourself up because you aborted some things. That's not a problem. Don't let the devil put you back in another tripping situation where you're so busy upset about what you didn't allow the lot to, to live put that in the past and say Lord I messed up but I'm not going to let it happen again 2016 Resurrection Sunday is a Sunday that God is going to begin to resurrect some things in my life Because I'm ready now. I'm ready to handle it. I'm ready to be serious about what God wants to do in my life. I couldn't have handled it before. But I've been through enough that I'm tired of going through all that stuff I've been through. And I'm ready for God to take me back to where I was before so I can now go even higher.